I, I don't know how, you know, how much you've experienced this uh, in sort of the, the years you've been here, but there is this kind of sense that like what you're supposed to do if you're like an Asian American kid growing up here is like, you know, you, you like, you get through high school, you like get into a good college and then like you leave Michigan and go somewhere else, go to like a bigger city. Forever. Forever. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how true that is like today or like in recent years, but, but I felt like it felt pretty true like when I was growing up there. I don't know, like, cause you, you've, you've been here for what, like three years now? Uh, no, I would say two years. I think when I lived in Seattle, it took me three or four years to have a close group of friends. And I was in school at the time, so there was a lot of ways to uh, meet people. And so, you know, as an adult, mm -hmm. I can relate to the theme of making friends from scratch. And also I realize now, you know, my parents have a community of, there's a small Vietnamese community in Oklahoma where I grew up. And uh, I think I didn't, Pay much attention to it growing up but like now um you know my dad a lot of his friends are other vietnamese veterans they were going through the same thing at the same time like raising kids in a new country and um, they have a really strong social network um even though they were they they got it by going through like a lot of hardship so i guess um, yeah when i find myself starting over in a new city now i think about what it must be like for anyone, but especially them when they first came to this country yeah. to make friends. And maybe your your parents told yeah. you what that was like too. In Oklahoma, did they have that community there when they first got there? Or was that is that more of a recent thing? Uh, yeah, it's the 10th largest um, Vietnamese community in the United States. Okay. And it was mostly because of the Catholic Church. So a lot of mm -hmm. South Vietnamese who left are were Catholics. How did your parents choose Michigan? So my dad, uh, after the Cultural Revolution, um, he started to like get his education and uh, you know they opened the schools again and so he was working to get his his degree. He had the opportunity because of kind of like the the visa situation and like geopolitics and things like that to to actually like come to, to take his uh, TOEFL exam uh, and like come to get his master's degree in engineering in in the U.S. And so at the end of the exam, uh, there was like around the back, there was this whole list of like colleges and universities you could send your test results to. And he was like, uh, he was like, I didn't know what any of these schools are. Like the only ones I recognize are like you know Harvard, MIT. Yeah. Um, and he was scanning the list and uh, it said one of the names that jumped out to him was the University of Detroit Mercy. And he thought, Detroit, they make cars there. Yeah. So that was one of the schools uh, that he checked off and they ended up offering him a scholarship. Uh, and so that's basically what determined us, like what decided us coming to Detroit. And he was like coming first to sort of find a place for us to live, get his books and stuff and get settled in. And he actually like, flew from Shanghai to California to see some friends. And then he took the Greyhound bus from LA to Detroit. It's a long ride. Yeah, it's like, I think two and a half days. And actually like one of the inspirations for my, my last book, See You in the Cosmos, mm -hmm. um, was th like, I went on a similar trip in order and part of the reason for that trip was to recreate that bus ride at the very end. Whoa. And it was like very, very uneventful, but like a lot of that like stuff, all the stuff leading up to it, I think like really shaped my book um, in terms of like, you know, the main character was asking these same questions of like, what was his dad's experience like? Watch One Detroit, Thursday at 7.30 p.m.